I received a great couple of questions regarding recovery from workouts. Uh, I'm going to read this specifically. Uh, this comes in from Pat. I appreciate your book, The Master Keys of Strength and Fitness, and sound all-around approach. Thank you very much. So here is my question. I am 54 years old. I do strength work, bodyweight calisthenics, run, walk, kettlebell work weekly. How many days off should I take for recovery? Question number one. What does recovery feel like? Question two. And is it a complete lack of any residual soreness? Very great question. We'll start with the first one. How many days off should I take for recovery? I have no clue. And I say that seriously because it really, really depends on you, your training, and a whole bunch of other factors. I can't say, you know, everyone needs to take two days off a week or else they're not going to be recovered. That's, you know, that's just throwing some number out there which is wrong because it really depends on you. Uh, let me give you a couple of ideas here. If you train to the limit, if you're pushing yourself as hard as you can go and trying to push even harder, then you're going to need to take more time to recover. Uh, if you train like I do for the most part where I keep things easy in effort to make them always be easy, I can train daily and I can even do the same things daily because I'm not pushing to that limit. I'm not really tapping into my recovery. Recovery is still happening, but I'm not pushing it to the... Because if you push really hard, you need that much time and more to recover. If you don't push very hard, you can still improve, but it doesn't take much recovery time. So you can continue to do this and improve differently. It's basically two different models that you have for improving your strength and performance. So how, how many days does it take to recover? It really depends. Uh, Bud Jeffries talked about when he squatted a thousand pounds to fully recover from that took six weeks because everything, every ounce of his being and more had to go into doing that lift that his central nervous system was fried. Everything to come back online and be running well again took that long. Uh, so if you're maxing out, uh, same thing can happen. Um, it probably won't take six weeks, but a lot of people, if they train really hard and heavy, they do need to take more time off. Several days between workouts, uh, you know, a week, two weeks between workouts where you're working the same exercise like squats or deadlifts if you're going very heavy. That's not uncommon. And if you actually do that, because most people fall in that sort of model under rest, that's going to allow you to actually get improvement from workout to workout and not burn yourself out because going hard and heavy will burn you out. Contrast that once again, if you train relatively easily for yourself, you can really work for the most part every single day. That's what I do. I train roughly six days a week, take at least one off, uh, but I'm always working the same things for the most part, just switching around depending on how my body feels. So what does recovery feel like? This is a very good question that's not often asked. When you're recovered, you will be very excited about your next workout. This is assuming you actually enjoy working out, which if you're watching this video, I assume you're one of us, right? So you should be really excited. If you're going in and you're dragging and not really feeling it, and it's not for some other reason, like you have some other things on your mind, then that's a, a clue. I'm not saying that's a definitive answer, but it's a clue that you are not sufficiently recovered at this time. You should be revved up and ready to go and excited to do it. Uh, that being said, you're not always at 100% recovered say. It, don't think of yourself as not recovered and recovered. Um, it's really a whole gray area, a whole continuum of where you can be on there. And really if you're training to any degree, um, you're going to spend time not fully recovered most of the time. It's just being overtrained a little bit and that is where you tend to get gains. Um, so that is a couple ideas there. So more on what it feels like to be recovered. You should feel, if you're a man, like a man, and I guess, you know, I don't have experience with this, but if you're a woman, to feel womanly. And what I mean by that is you feel very good in your body. This means your hormones are going right there. You know, got testosterone pumping in everything to the point where you feel very good, confident, that sort of thing, standing tall. You should feel like this. If you're feeling beat up, from overtraining, then you're not going to feel this way. You'll need more rest in order to get 
to that point. So that's a couple ideas. And regarding the soreness in your body, um, soreness is an indication that you've trained. Um, and you don't need to wait for it to go away completely. In fact, working out can help to get rid of soreness. So it is something you want to use. You don't want to only use that as your only indicator of whether you're training or not, or overtrained or not for, for your recovery. But it is something to look at in there. Uh, usually if I am very sore, because I spend so much time listening to my body in order to guide my workouts, I don't know if I'm overly sore in specific areas of my body to not really use that area of the body because I need more time to recover. And even if I try to do exercise, I know I won't be performing at my top. So I may do a little just to get the blood moving in the area, but I don't completely uh, just go hard at it once again. You have to learn to listen to your body. I think that's going to be your best guide in learning when you're recovered, when you need to train harder and all that stuff. That comes with practice, that comes with experimentation, and doing this for a long time. You can get better and better at listening to your body. You know when you're recovered, you know when you need more sleep, you know when you need to eat more for recovery. You get better and better at knowing all those things to help you recover as best as possible as you're doing your training. So I hope you've gotten a lot of ideas out here. Got a whole lot more about recovery on my website, legendarystrength.com. Uh, specifically, a lot of people don't look at the health aspects, how that really affects it, from things that sleep to uh, grounding, all sorts of stuff that can really help ramp up your recovery. Be sure to go check out legendarystrength.com. One of my free reports there is on earthing and how that can really help your recovery. So be sure to go grab that and start doing it immediately because most people don't know about this, but it works phenomenally well and is great for your health at the same time. Thanks.